Okay, we are on week eight. It's been two months of this faith tour. I cannot believe it. I feel like it's been pretty easy to commit to going to one place of spiritual worship every single weekend. This weekend, I really had to put forth the effort to make sure I had the space and time to do so, which I just wanted to honor my commitment to what I said I would do. Um, I had to ask friends to split Sunday's plans into two days, Saturday and Sunday, and um, find a place of worship. My hair looks crazy, but it's just freshly washed. Find a place of worship um, that had a time schedule that would go into my plans. So, or that would complement our plans. So I'm going to Riverside Church, which is a Baptist church. I do feel like I've had the signs to go there. Um, I have plans literally five minutes away from this church at 12, and the church ends at 11.45. It's also called Riverside Church, and the songs that I chose to pick this morning were both called River. Um, so I'm like, okay, I think I'm supposed to be here. I know Baptist Church really stands for like baptism, and I know there's a lot of like Jesus connected. Um, I haven't done research this time before I went. I typically try not to, and then I'll do research after. But I think I did a little research on a Baptist church when my friend went there. So, yeah, we are going. I'm gonna take you along for the day. I have a really busy schedule today. We're gonna go to church, and then gonna go to my friend's birthday dinner. And then I have a networking event and then I have a massage. So we're gonna get into this Uber and I will share the journey with you. faith tour. This week I went to Riverside Church. It was a Baptist church in Highlands in Denver, Colorado. And the experience overall I would say was interesting. I would say it was interesting because what they tried to do with this church was they brought the regular service together with the, ooh, my water bottle's on the ground, together with the Espanol speaking service. 
the Spanish speaking pastor and the regular pastor that were standing on stage and they were sharing the message together. And when they were sharing the message together, my experience with that was it was very painful. And I say this with hesitation because I feel their hearts and I feel exactly what they were trying to do. But the entire service, I did not feel God flowing through them. I did not feel that they were an open channel to allow God to move through them. And ultimately what I experienced was I did not feel God in their message at all. And what they did was the English speaking pastor would talk about a excerpt in the Bible. They were using Galatians. And he would speak, but he was reading off of his iPad the entire time. So you could feel that he was like reading. It's not like I have like my notes here and I'm, I kind of just look down and I'm still conversating with you. Like they were reading word for word, like a script that they wrote out. So that felt very disconnected to me. And then the Spanish speaking pastor had a little bit more life to him, but he was still reading off of his piece of paper. And so I understand what was happening was because I don't think the Spanish speaking pastor could understand English that well, and the English speaking pastor didn't know Spanish. So they had to get together and probably worked with a translator to come up with an experience. So that was very interesting. The other painful part, which again, I say it was such hesitancy because I want to come without judgment and with so much love and really see through rose colored glasses what they were trying to do. But the Spanish speaking pastor would then speak his own experience into the sermon. And because the English speaking pastor didn't know Spanish, he had his own translator to translate back into English. And she was reading like this, harmonious symphony where every note enhances as if she was like translating back into English. So when I say it was painful, that was my lived experience of this church. And they don't typically bring the Spanish speaking church and the English speaking church together. But what they were trying to do was the fact that because school is coming back and because in Denver, there's been a lot of school shootings and a lot of challenges in the schools um, because of the lack of diversity or the integration of diversity that is in Colorado or yeah, is in Colorado is they were trying to really create the safety in diversity. So the whole sermon was about uh, diversity and it was embracing diversity and celebrating unity. And so they, the pastors were both preaching about really this understanding of um, letting go of judgment between the differences of beliefs, letting go of the judgment um, between the differences in diversity and understanding that in the kingdom of God, it's diverse, right? And what the message was, was that when we can learn from different cultural expressions here in the human experience, it's preparing us for the diversity in the kingdom of God, which I understand. And from my experience, I was sitting there like, what is this trying to teach me? If anything, I grew up in a very diverse experience. My high school and middle school had black, white, Mexican, um, Tongan, Samoan, Asian, Japanese, right? And my family, there's um, Hispanics that have been married into our family. My cousins are half white and half Japanese. Um, I was on an all, almost all black basketball team, except for our point guard um, was Asian and Hawaiian. And my brother played football and he always had different cultures and different races, ethnicities over at our house. So I was like sitting there like, I don't understand. If anything, I'm like super diverse. And he was talking about how God's love is boundless, how it's important to embrace others' cultures and others' beliefs. And it doesn't mean that you have to necessarily accept their truth, but if you don't emerge in their cultures, then how are you gonna point them to the truth? And so I'm sitting there and I'm like, if there's anything, like I'm on this faith tour, like what is this message? Um, so I'm just getting frustrated through the entire thing because 
I'm like, I am exploring all cultures. Like that's part of the reason why I embarked on this faith tour was so I could learn other cultures and how they worship God and source and what, what their belief systems are. And so the sermon came to an end and I was still sitting in frustration. I wanted to pack up my bags. I told you that one time I wanted to pack up my bags because I was triggered by what they were talking about but this time I was triggered by I wasn't even I was just frustrated with the delivery and the fact that I couldn't feel God and what I witnessed was that I've been going to these experiences trying to reach for something trying to have an experience where I can experience God and I can have a breakthrough and it's always about me right and so at the very end of the sermon they ended early and they had us all go into prayer before they ended and when they went into prayer they had us pray out loud in our own language. And so I'm sitting there in prayer, like literally, good thing no one was around me. I was like, I don't know what this sermon was about. It was very painful. I don't know what the message is for me. I wish that you could share what the message is for me. God, show me what the message is that I'm supposed to receive. I feel very frustrated. I feel very confused. I feel like I haven't felt you today. Like, where are you? If you're really here, reveal yourself to me, right? And so I'm saying all of this and what I recognized was that every experience that I have gone to has been me about me. So it's been about what can I get from the experience? What can I learn? How can God speak to me? Like a very greedy need to experience God, a very desperate energy of experiencing God. And in this experience, what I realized when I was in prayer is that the journey isn't always about me and that's actually what's creating separation from god is me trying to think that it's about me but ultimately it's not about always my journey but loving people through their own journeys that the gospel is what that he spoke it the gospel will come to me on the way to someone else so that this journey that i'm doing is not just about me but it's so you can see what's available for you in your own spiritual journey in your own relationship with god and really being able to create the relationship with god that you desire and so mine wasn't necessarily about embracing cultures but coming into oneness and what i learned was that the diversity that I was feeling was this separation of duality rather than the feeling of oneness that we are all God's sons and daughters. I've been operating from this like wild place of duality and now this is my permission to come into a journey of oneness where I feel connected to all things and it doesn't matter what culture, what they believe in, they don't believe in, right? It's really being able to understand that God's love is boundless and in oneness I can experience God's boundless love. So that was really powerful. And as I'm sitting in prayer and feeling like God wasn't there to speak or to be present in this church experience, it made it even more real that I had, I felt tears coming down my face as I'm in prayer. And I recognized that God is always with me no matter what. And I don't need a spiritual teacher to be able to access God, that I have created my relationship with God where I can access God on my own. And that was really cool because, again, 10 weeks ago, let's say, I didn't have a relationship with God. I was praying in my bedroom, begging and asking and wishing that God could reveal himself to me because I felt like no one was listening. I felt like he wasn't there. I felt like he wasn't giving me or, or providing me the things that I was desiring and asking for and hoping for and wishing for. So that was like a massive breakthrough through where I was like, oh, shoot that even though I didn't connect with necessarily with the message from the pastor, that I'm connected to God within myself, that I don't need anyone else or anything outside of me to connect with God. So I feel like that's a very, very powerful reflection and lesson that I learned. And I knew the moment that I wanted to stay that, or I wanted to leave that there was something that God was calling me deeper into. And so, I just really tried to shower the pastors and the translator with love and to recognize and witness that I don't need anyone else. Like I don't need religion. I don't need church to grow and deepen my relationship with God. And while the churches and experiences and temples have been beautiful mentors, like I am, I have created my connection with God. So 
so powerful. And I will continue to do this faith tour. What I really recognized was it doesn't matter where I go. It doesn't matter if I go to a church, a temple. It doesn't matter if I go to a interfaith experience. It only matters that um, I connect to God through my conversations with God and through prayer. And really being able to understand that everywhere I go, he's there. Every time I take a step, he's there. Every time I turn my head, he's there. Every time I close my eyes, he's there. Every time I pray, he's there. And so I'm going to find him because he's within me and that I am an extension of God. Instead of me seeking for the experience, I get to turn inward and connect to God. So that was my basic experience. It was really cool to witness how church is expressed in Spanish. It was really powerful to practice my Spanish. I grew up speaking Spanish. Um, I went to school for Spanish. And it was really cool to learn diff the different cultural expressions of the kingdom of God through Spanish. So um, their biggest message was like, if you don't like diversity, heaven is gonna be hard for you. And again, one of the things I don't believe in is like heaven or hell. I've experienced my own death through doing Bufo plant medicine and I witnessed that I went straight to the light and I believe that everyone are, everyone is light beings and I've witnessed that myself so I don't really believe in heaven and hell and again that's not something I've like truly explored but I've definitely experienced it in my Bufo experience. I know that diversity is important to me. I even like diverse men <laughs> so I really just found that there's still a subtle whisper of judgment that happens unconsciously in the very back subtle whisper of my consciousness. And what I really get to do is to, to come into acceptance and to deeper acceptance of everyone on their journey. And while I'm still human, I can do a better job at making sure that I'm not judging someone's hair or their clothing or their skin texture and really just being open to coming back to love. And so what I'm really learning through this whole experience, just to give you a little thing to wrap it up, is I'm really learning that God, expressions of God, expressions of religion, expressions of someone connecting to a higher power and source universe is all just the same thread of love. Everyone is wanting to operate from love, to feel love, to feel that there's a trust in a, in a, in a power greater than us. Love is really the thread that, that is the same weaving in all religions. And just how it's expressed or how people connect to it is different. So that's really powerful for me. I'm gonna keep exploring that. Um, I've been called to finish A Course in Miracles, which I've been reading. Not anywhere near finished, but continue to read it. And then I'm called to the book, um, The Law of One. And then my massage therapist asked if I have got to connect with the Bible yet. And I just don't feel called to really dive deep into the Bible. I did pick up the Bible in the Baptist church. It felt weird. It felt interesting. It felt challenging. It felt all of the things, but I just don't feel called to read the Bible yet. And then the last piece was I got to experience baptism, which you can see right here. Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Repent of your sin and place him as Lord in your life. It is my privilege and my honor, my sister in Christ, to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You're buried with Jesus and baptized. Because I didn't feel like God was present, I didn't feel like the baptism was very potent. I didn't feel like there was a lot of God's presence there, although they might have felt it, but as a witnesser, I didn't. I also haven't been on their journey, so I can't be one to judge. It felt very quick. It felt just different. When I experienced baptism and Catholicism, it was different. So that's my experience. Um, and I have a deep yearning to go back to Red Rocks Church, which is the first church that I went to when I first started this faith tour. <sighs> Stay tuned. It's going to be a journey. I think someone asked me, is it eight weeks? Is it 10 weeks? I'm like, it's infinite until... I get told otherwise, so I'm just going to continue with this journey. It feels yummy. It feels nourishing. I get excited to explore on Sundays, and it's giving me a new sense of adventure while deepening my relationship to God and spirituality and myself. So, yay! Yay!